Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him He Taught us many duas Many prayers He explained them to us He taught them to us And these are all um, Collated Collected Recorded in hadith And duas are very valuable uh, Statements A dua in reality has a big message contained within it for the islah, for the rectification of human being. So the dua is a form of a statement that Nabi al Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam has ordered us or ex- exhorted us to to recite. And Allah Taala has put the fadl, His grace and mercy, that due to the sadqa, due to the blessings of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in the form of duas, Allah Taala has given us more paths. To get close to him. So du'as, the prayers, are paths. The paths that teach us how to get to Allah. That is what a du'a is. Now, there's an ajib and unique du'a from all du'as. And it is short, very small in length. But obviously, as I've just said, that every du'a is a, it contains an important subject within it. Allahumma ghfirli. Warhamni, wadkhilni, jannati. Subhanallah. It's a very small dua, but it is very adheem subject within this dua. Now this dua, if you put it to one side, on a scale, and put all of the goodness of the world, and keep multiplying and multiplying, and all the na'mas that Allah has put in the dunya, and everything, keep multiplying the dunya, and put it on the other scale, then this dua, the rest of the dunya we met on the other scale cannot even come to the atom's weight comparison. So everything is fana. It is finite, the dunya. But this dua that Allah Ta'ala has given to us is baqa. It is everlasting, everlasting forever. So a great, great asset. If someone gives you something, but then it blows away and floats away and it... And it um, dissolves or disappears, but something that is there forever, even if it's small in matter, that's what we need. That's what we need. So in this dua, in this prayer, three subjects are presented in this one short dua, in the form of a dua, a prayer. So the dua, the recitation of this prayer, in other words, the objective of the dua, yes, because the objective is always at the end or the conclusion, isn't it? So for example, if we say to Allah, we ask from Allah, Nabi al Karim, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the master of the two worlds, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I repeat, stated, Wadhul al Jannati, that, O oh Allah Ta'ala, please give me paradise, subhanAllah, glory be to Allah. So the servant of Allah is requesting Allah for Jannah. This is the maqsad, the objective of the dua, of the prayer. The maqsad. Our objective is that Jannah may become our final destination. where we live forever. Because we have been sent to this world to attain that destination. And all our attempts and our striving, ibadah, worship, day, night, efforts, striving, working hard is for what reason, for what purpose? To attain Jannah. Paradise. Allah Ta'ala said this. Then Allah Ta'ala in so many verses has praised Jannah, defined Jannah, explained the conditions of Jannah, the surrounds, the environment. And even then at the end of that, Allah says, you still won't understand what is Jannah. You can never understand, you can never imagine correctly what is Jannah. Because Allah Ta'ala has given us signs and signs and encouragement that work hard, work hard. And everything compared to that in the world, what if you see? Reduce it. Because it's not going to give us any success eternally. If due to the world, 
if the world is, is glowing, glittering, uh, and it dims the hereafter. The world dims the hereafter. Just like if you put a fire in front of a child and it's shining, and if next to it you put a diamond, it's not shining, then where will the child go? The child will run to the fire. Because obviously it looks like there's more light and more attraction. We're the same. Allah Ta'ala says that I've made paradise uh, great for you. And this world has got glows and glitter and, and chamak, shining matter all over. We run to the shining matter, to the... To the Attraction that we see externally, but the true Hassan wa Jamal, the beauty of Jannah, we waste it. So the first point, do you understand the first point in this dua that we have to try? Praise be to Allah, that instead of this world which will not give us eternal uh, well-being and success, we should not compromise Jannah paradise with it. Whenever we have the tussle that Jannah is on one hand, or we want the attraction of the world on the other hand, we need to decide doesn't matter how beautiful and attractive seems the dunya, we will not spoil our Jannah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Keep on understanding the points I'm saying, because we have to work after this. Yeah, That's the reason why we're talking. Every moment, every test, we'll have an exam, a, uh, an exam, a test. Allah says that always you will have a test. Allah will challenge us, test us, see us for what we really are. Ajib, dunya, in different colors and forms will come in front of us, and we will have to make decisions on every step. That our permanent abode is what? Jannah. Do I want to attain this? So if I do wrong, I'll destroy my Jannah. This temple temporary thing I'm getting in the world, leave it. Leave it. Because I don't want to spoil my Jannah, my paradise. One thing. That's step number one. So let's create the awareness of this and understand that we need to do this action in every way or form. We need to do this. So when Jannatis will go to the hereafter into paradise, then they won't be happy. Huh? They won't be happy even though they've got Jannah paradise. Let's understand the point now. So when you go into paradise, inshallah, then you won't go looking for hoors and your women, and you won't look towards the palaces, you won't look towards the glasses of alcohol, you won't be worried about enjoying yourself and, and being merry. When you see all of these things, haji, has seen beautiful women, maidens, and when we hungry people from this world will be gone there and stood there but we won't be shocked or surprised or taken aback by these gifts and rewards so then why have we asked for jannah for paradise tell me why are we asking for paradise what reason in reality what will be the khushu of jannah what will be the happiness of jannah that we want that will suppress all of these good things that i've just mentioned the rules so my brothers Jannatis, the people of paradise won't be pleased or happy just because of getting into paradise. There's another point here we need to understand. In reality, the inhabitants of paradise, with regards to the enjoyment of paradise, the Jannati, he gets those enjoyments in this world. Say, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Yes, that he gets those rewards in this world. The Allah Ta'ala has given us his kitab, the Qur'an Hakim, the taste, the enjoyment, the, the, the satisfaction attained. Ask that person. That is the third part of the night. Rather, let's go before the third part of the night. It's dark, intense darkness. He stood in the corner and he's uh, made intention to pray Nafal Salah and he's reciting the Quran. And he has the understanding of the Quran in his heart. And if that's descending into the heart, a person does tazkiyah, tazkiyah, tazkiyah through dhikr, then his heart is full of noor and light. Subhanallah. Noor ala noor. And inside him the marifa that we don't understand what is the nur and the marifa of the Qur'an. That is something in Jannah that Allah knows best. The nur of the Qur'an is coming into the person's heart like oceans. Then subhanallah he'll be stood there and he will be having the paradise enjoyment in this world. Let's go beyond that. Let's go beyond that. That when his beard is moist and wet with the tears after reciting the Qur'an in that part of the night and he stood there then he recites tasbihat and he praises Allah in the ruku in the bowing position then into prostration and then subhanallah imagine what that that prostration will give to the person in jannah so in reality the taste of jannah is in this world the taste is here the enjoyment is here but for those people on whose tongues they can absorb that and taste the taste of jannah isn't it do we understand we read quran this is the style of the one but how is that person reading quran the way the quran and goes when the taste of the Quran comes into the heart and the enjoyment, just like when you enjoy food, where does the 
the enjoyment come on the tip of the tongue. If you take the tongue off, then the enjoyment and the taste is gone. So the Quran, dhikr, remembrance of Allah, ibadat, worship, sujood, prostration, great ibadat. Allah says, Allah says, do my sajda, sajda to me and you'll come close to me. Allah says that there must be some enjoyment then in the action, isn't it? But we don't know. We don't know why. Because that taste we want to take from our tongue, we don't have the tongue. To taste the food. We don't have the tongue to taste the Quran and the deen. So those who have moistened their tongues with the dhikr of Allah, with the remembrance of Allah, they've taken away the, the evil and the bad things from their life, then their tongues, in other words their hearts, they will taste the beautiful attractions of Jannah. So that person in Jannah, he will already have tasted Jannah on the planet earth. Subhanallah. So what is it that will make people, the inhabitants of Jannah happy? Point to note the taste the enjoyment that they will be seeking due to which they used to do everything in the world everything they would give up in the world they would give up their time and their energy and their efforts they put everything to one side to attain Jannah but what is it that will give them true happiness eternal happiness in Jannah that thing they will get in Jannah for that reason they will be happy Radai ilahi Allah Ta'ala's pleasure. That when Allah Ta'ala will say in Jannah, the people of Jannah, I am happy with you. Allahu Akbar. When the people of Jannah will hear this, the Jannati at that time immediately, you cannot imagine the pinnacle of his happiness. He will say, Subhanallah, Allah, I've attained everything. Allah, you happy with me? You happy with me? That's what great words Allah will say, Ridwan Allah. Allah said in the Quran, isn't it? That my rada, rada, Ridwan Allahi Akbar, it will be the greatest reward. Ridwan Allahi Akbar, Allah says in the Quran. Isn't this the enjoyment for the Jannati? So, the Jannati, that Allah's Ridwan, Allah's Rada, happiness will overwhelm everything. Allah's the rewards of Jannah, the houses in Jannah, the rewards of Jannah, and the Jannatis will be waiting. Allah, are you happy with us? Are you happy with us? Are you satisfied with us? Are you content with us? The Jannati goes to Jannah to get this maqam of Allah's Rada, Allah's pleasure. Am I right or am I wrong? Am I right? Sahih? So say subhanallah then. Say subhanallah. At least we should appreciate what we're hearing. So brothers... That's the maqam. So the jannati, when he will say, Subhanallah, Allah is happy with me. Allah is happy with me. Then he gets a little bit of worldly happiness. For example, if you love somebody immensely, you are ashik, you'll give everything, your time and effort and whatever you have, because you have ishq in your heart, love for that person. That person your ideal, your beloved, your mahboob, you have everything, walking, talking, looking, sitting, traveling, your heart's always thinking about that person, you have muhabbat. And then suddenly for some reason that person's unhappy with you, Allah will ask that ashik, his life, the dunya will be destroyed. Upside down. His life will be upside down. His life will go turn blank. He'll, he'll feel that his, he, he, he or she will feel life is no motive. He'll stop eating, drinking. And he'll start doing, ah, oh, hiding, sighing, and depressed and stressed. And he'll say, oh, if, if only I was to pass away sooner than later. Why? They'll say, what's wrong with you? You've got everything to your name. No, I've got sadness in my heart because my mahboob, my beloved is unhappy with me. Day and night, how do I please my mahboob? How do I please my mahboob? Suddenly he gets the good news communicated to him huh? that your mahboob is now happy with you. Subhanallah. All night long he will celebrate. He won't sleep that night. He will have enjoyment in eating, in sleeping, in every action. The loot of the taste will come again. Life will be revived again just like there's a rosebud the rosebud you don't give it water the leaves and the petals go dry and the roots go dry suddenly you water that plant then you see it start to go red and it will start to spread the petals will open up and then it will start swaying to and fro in the wind in the breeze isn't this the rose flower so when you're mahboob uh, when the is happy then you'll enjoy life and and mashallah, the redness of the lips will come back and the freshness, the vibrancy will come back into life. The, mo the motive of life will be there to see. For example, if a person has somebody beloved in the world, in any way or form, then if that attraction is there and the love is there, then the, the person has satisfaction in life. So this is what the mahboobs of Allah want. Day and night they ask, Allah, are you happy with me? Allah, are you happy with me? Allahu Akbar. So this is something that should really... Uh, pierce our hearts, affect our hearts. They don't go to sleep 
the Mahabuz well, I don't know if Allah is happy with my prostration. Day and night they're in this conundrum, they're in this, uh, they're bewildered, they're not sure. Is Allah happy with me? Is my salah accepted? We don't know nothing, do we? We don't care about this point, we don't know about the taste of deen, we don't know about the reality of Jannah. These points I'm telling you, in reality, this is what we need to target in our lives. Allah's pleasure. They also pray salah, they do prostration, sujood, du'as, and they keep on crying. They keep on crying. They're still shaking, their body shake. Why? Is Allah happy with me? Is Allah accepted my deeds? Just like an ashib for his beloved, he sends gifts, he sends gifts, he's waiting. And then the beloved says, oh, I like this gift, I'm happy with you. Then he'll jump and do a somersault out of happiness. So Allah Ta'ala says that these things I've given to you, deen. So the ashik of Allah, the lover of Allah, the ashikain, I'm speaking about them. Yes, mashallah, you are the ashikain, those who count the reward. Their feeling and emotion at the time because we don't have that emotion, we don't have that diamond because our diamond is hidden in the dirt at the moment, contaminated through which we'll get the benefit. Yes, so with a person, for example, when he is looking towards the system of the dunya, so that's that the, the, the system for the hereafter is, is cut off at the moment from us. We read Quran, I read for Thawab, I want reward, I read this many pages, or I prayed Salah. Have you prayed Isha? Yes, I prayed Isha. Have you prayed? That's it. We don't know. We have a calculation of this many regards. Number the honor, keep 30, fast 29. I've done Hajj. Yes, I've done Hajj. Calculations, limits, boundaries. The Kaaba, the person's reaching to the Kaaba al-Multazam. And we're asking for silly du'as. And he's crying. That Allah, is he happy with me? Is he pleased with me? This is what we need to think. That is Allah unhappy with me due to a certain action I've done wrong? Or is Allah unhappy with me due to this and that, X, Y, Z? And as you continue, you analyze the Qutb, the Abdals, the great bodies of Allah. As you're progressing in your life, come to the Sahaba Kram. Go back in history. Go back, go back to the Sahaba. Go to Azab Abu Bakr Siddiq. They had the same, he had the same habit. And the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi let's go to his blessed court. What was Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's habit? There was no greater human being in the universe than the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What was his habit? Regular. Every sitting of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, hundred times Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would do, Astaghfar, Astaghfar, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. Is this a minor action? The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, innocent, no sin, no one greater than him in the universe from mankind. The Sahaba Ikram radiallahu anhum asked, because they were ashiks and they wanted to know, have guidance, oh Prophet of Allah, may we assign our parents to you. Why do you do this? Why have you said this? Subhanallah. That why do you feel sad and seek forgiveness? Allah has given good tidings for you in the Quran and you're still doing astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. The Quran is saying that there's no one like you. You have not sinned. You are, you are whiter than white. You are innocent, beyond innocent. And you are Sayyid al Mursaleen. So why is this that you're reciting astaghfar, oh Prophet of Allah, subhanallah. And you? And then you went to the first heaven, the second, the third, the fourth. You continue to travel. You were seeing the scenes of the hereafter. Such great blessed eyes of the Prophet ﷺ. And he met the angels. And such angels that a person cannot believe. The, the, the special angels, Sidratul Muntaha, the Jamaat of the angels. Can we imagine? Don't even ask. The hadith has mentioned them what a jamaat of angels they were. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw them as well. He continued, he continued, he continued. And where did he reach? To the Arsh. To the magnificent throne of Allah, to Allah's throne. And then Nabi Sallallahu said, and he saw the maqam, the jamal, the beauty, the glory, the height, the shan. He saw the levels. Allahu Akbar. Such great scenes the blessed eyes of the Prophet Sallallahu witnessed. Was this not his, uh, the, the Prophet Sallallahu who saw this? Shall I tell you a point in passing? This is a fakir's nukta. Don't give a fatwa. What did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi bring back until today? It cannot be. It cannot be the great Nabis have gone, passed before us. And the eyes of the Prophet are praised in the Quran that they did not blink. They did not know. He saw, he saw and he recognized what Allah Ta'ala had given to him and where Allah Ta'ala had called him. So what did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam come back with to planet Earth, to us? What, what gift did he receive? What was the gift that Allah Ta'ala gave? That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi became happy on receiving that gift. What was that gift? Allah Ta'ala gave humanity, humanity, subhanallah, subhanallah. That my Rabb gave me, presented to me humanity. Humanity, a big muqam status of bandagi. Yes, bandagi, servanthood. Servanthood, humanity. And from this maqam, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi came back to the world. And after coming back to the world, then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi continued to do istaghfar, istaghfar. So point, the point here is... 
that this is a great gift of Allah, that every istighfar of Rasulullah had had recognition, had recognition, Allah, I'm your servant, you are my khalik, my creator, and I'm your servant. And when the maqams, that Rasulullah every second, every moment, his darajat increased, and he was in this emotion, that Allah, I am your servant, you are my malik. Astaghfirullah, Allah, you are my malik, I am your servant. You are my malik, I am your servant. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us, servant to Allah, humanity, that this was on the platform was of, of istighfar, seeking forgiveness from Allah. So what lesson do we learn from this? What's the message that has been delivered to us and has reached us so about from this istighfar, from the forgiveness that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam requested, a big sabaq, a big lesson that we need. And what is that? What is that? That what will introduce us to Allah, what will make us get close to Allah, what will give us the greatest reward of Rada ilahi, Allah's pleasure. Yes, Allah maqfirli, warhamni, wadkhilni, jannati. That if you want paradise, Allah Ta'ala says. Allah says, if you want Jannah, paradise, that what is behind reaching paradise, what's the, what's the hint here? Rada ilahi, Allah's pleasure. That if you want to please Allah, so that you can get Jannah, because Jannah has come out of this phrase now, that if you want to please Allah, so you can get Jannah, then there's only one thing we need to do, through which we can please Allah and reach to Jannah, paradise. This is the method. And you can understand, Allah says, Allah Allah first and foremost, Allah says, first thing you need to do, to get to the maqam of Allah's forgiveness is do true tawbah to Allah Ta'ala. True tawbah. Say subhanallah, subhanallah. Isn't this the dua? Yes. First and foremost, the first step of bandagi, servant to Allah, is tawbah. tawbah. And tawbah is done on two things. Astaghfar, there are two emotions of tawbah. Yes. That you have to, tawbah, true tawbah, eliminates the sins and elevates the status of that person. That Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam obviously he didn't sin he was innocent so the istighfar of Rasulullah sallam every second elevated his glorious status higher 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 and Allah knows best what is the maqam of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but every istighfar elevates the person just like Nabi sallam's status elevated with every istighfar now for us tawbah is made of two parts that this is the proof of the servanthood of a human being this is our hal isn't it that we are surrounded by sins we are donned in sins. So together as happened is fasting, hajj, zakat, fasting, prayer, Quran. All of these things are secondary. Secondary. That a person cannot get the reward or the benefit of these things unless first and foremost, he, the human being needs to say, Allah, I see forgiveness for these sins that I've committed and I still commit. And they buy that and I'm about to do. Ask Allah for acceptance of those deeds. Allah forgive me for my sins, I will leave these sins, and I'll accept my deeds. So the first point here to understand, that we need to understand, this hadith tells us this, is that what we require, the salik, the sadiq, the sincere, the tazkiyah, people, the people are the Sufis who are on the path of tazkiyah. The first thing they will do is what? They will do what? Tawbah, repent to Allah. True tawbah, true repentance. True remorse, if we want paradise, Allah's rada, then my brothers, first and foremost, the human being needs to do true tawbah, true repentance. True tawbah should be like this, as the tawbah demands. Yes, that all our sins, we need to wrap them up in one place, into a bundle, and put them to one side. Zahiri wa batini, external and internal. And we're on a journey, Allah, towards you. To please you. Allah, we want our salah to be accepted by you. We want our worship to be accepted by you, Allah. We want our salah to be accepted by you, etc. So what do we need to do first and foremost? True tawbah, honest tawbah, honest repentance. That's why you see that when you go to a sheikh, a teacher, he doesn't say anything to you. First thing he teaches you and instructs you is what? Do tawbah. Repent. First and foremost. Otherwise, you cannot progress as a student. And that tawbah we don't understand. is that we think, oh, I'm bad. I'm bad. Oh, give me bad, please. Give me bad. My children give them bad. Make my wife bad. Do bad to this person, that person. Oh, please look around and give bad. That person who's doing baya, and he's entered into that journey of suluk, Allah Ta'ala has instilled passion and designed that person's heart. And that person further goes further. And the, the, the naib of Rasulullah the deputies of Rasulullah the walis of Allah who deputize the sahab Ram and Rasulullah that sheikh takes the hand, the right hand, and he is teaching the student to do tawbah. And the tawbah is from Allah, Allah Ta'ala promises in the Qur'an that when the individual does tawbah, subhanallah, then my habib will do dua for him, and I will forgive him, 
And all the sins he came to me with, Allah says, I will transfer them into good deeds. Say, Alhamdulillah, 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 that we have all reached to this point, that we have become baya at the hands of a sheikh. Alhamdulillah. What a great journey we are embarking on. Maybe today we've understood. Maybe to, before today we didn't understand. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Whoever doesn't understand Urdu, then the English translation will come. Then you can you could go and listen to the English translation. Go and sit there. Don't sit here like donkeys you don't understand. That if you don't understand the words I'm saying, then I cannot take the meaning out of my pocket. Can I go and sit where the translation is taking place to understand? So here, if the servant reaches here or the sister or the brother, and then we waste the opportunity after that, then we're wasting time. So the biggest protection that we need after getting to this stage is what? Tawbah. Repent. Allah, you've made me do tawbah. Now I need to stick to my tawbah. After that, the doors of mad, if Allah's name is open. A person who stays a days to his tawbah, Allah will drag and pull that person towards his name. It cannot be that that person stops any maqam. So many maqams of Allah. I swear by Allah. I swear, but I've heard from the Mashaikh, I swear, I swear that there's no moment, no time in the life of a Sufi. Yes? And Ibn al Waqta magazine that was published many people, they said, what is this name? And this was from the Khanka, Abu Khanka was asked that uh, the Ulema Karam, the scholars, they asked, what is this name you've kept? Ibn al Waqt. Then how can we explain to them what was the meaning? Then eventually they understood what is the meaning of Ibn al Waqt. The Sufi is Ibn al Waqt, the son of time. Yes? Reliant on time. The every moment, every second, the wali Allah, the Sufi, is every second is precious beyond precious. Alhamdulillah, the true sincere student, he wants his status to be elevated every second. Every salah, sajda, prostration, dhikr, every word that emanates from his tongue, Allah's name when he's stated, then his levels go so high, we can never imagine. He becomes selfish in this world, that's why he's called Ibn al Waqt. He becomes what? Selfish in the world. Yes, he becomes selfish. That I don't have no link with the dunya. I don't want to attain any dunya. Yes, I'll leave this dunya behind me. When I he becomes selfish. This is what we call selfish. Isn't it? Ibn al-Waqt closes his eyes, ignores the dunya, closes his eyes from big value of the dunya. And every word that's emanating from his tongue, Allah Ta'ala says in it, that become his tongue with which he speaks, his hand with which he writes, I become his eyes with which he sees, etc. Hadith al-Qudsi. Isn't it? Authentic hadith and the ulama, the scholars are here. So how does Allah become the hand and the eyes and etc.? Allah Ta'ala says that every part of the body of that Sufi, he has done tawbah, that every part of his body, his actions make that person closer to me. Allah says, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah is great, subhanAllah. So this is the path, my friends, the line that we have adopted after doing tawbah, that if you, you've entered into the path of the wali of Allah, understand the ahmiyat, the importance of this, my friends. It's not a joke. It's not a joke, this path. So great a place Allah Ta'ala has delivered us to. If we've done tawbah, before doing tawbah is in this, you go out, you sin again, then you go into bad society, bad community, bad company, half a heart, partridge, half a quail. Oh, I made a mistake, I went to the wrong place. Sometimes I listen to music, and I like music, I go to a musical place or a bad environment. No, 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 no. Don't deceive yourself and others. Don't become selfish. Selfish. That this dunya is pulling you, dragging you. Oh, you haven't come to our wedding, you didn't come to our function. Become selfish. You become Ibn al waqt You understand now what is Ibn al waqt Become selfish. Why do I need to go there? Why am I being forced to go there? Why do I need to do that? No, no, no. That I have no worry about these things or your criticism. That after that I'll give you a haq what is due. We cannot do those actions. That if you're involved in a sin, even if you're trying to make somebody good, don't do a bad to make him. No, no, I'm doing a sin, so I want to influence him, make him good, it will affect him. Then he is shamil. He is involved in the sin. Do you not trust Allah when you speak to someone? Do dua to Allah. That Allah realign this person, make him correct. That for example, if somebody is sinning and you want to give that person da'wah, then if you go soft and try to give da'wah while doing the actions of that person wrong, then Allah says that you will lose that that um, clash. I saw that when I put my ears towards Hazrat Sahib, my, my Sheikh, on every breath, Wallahi, I saw Allah, Hazrat Sahib was saying, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. I don't know what he was seeing and on which point he was saying, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, always to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Continuously, the staying up all night and a person who stays up all night and his tongue is moist with Allah's dhikr and 24 hours he sat at the age of 80, 90 years in front of the Kaaba for 24 hours, not even turn around, not even move. The same way he's seated in the beginning is the same way in the end. He didn't have what was food or water and the, the status of his fear 
the status of his fear was what? Alhamdulillah, you cannot imagine, we cannot imagine that how much fear of Allah he had at that time in his heart. Subhanallah. So tajalliyat of the Kaaba, he could see. The awliyala, they see these things. Subhanallah. So Hazrat at that time, what the jalli he must have been seeing, the greatness, the glory of the Kaaba, apart from that, no one could sit like that. He must have been witnessing the great effects. And his aks, his effect would come on to me. So can a person then remain angry? And murids, the other murids, they would maybe disappear from the back, uh, from, from the, the back of the queue. Okay, then they'd go and eat and then come back. But Hazrat had so much jalal and jamal, subhanallah. Both things hand in hand. These both things were the emotions of my shaykh. Otherwise he was mashallah immersed in Ismail Zatallah's name. That if he raised his eyes and looked at anybody, then that person could not move from there. He'd be affected. I experienced this in Makkah. In Makkah, in Haram. I saw a person who came. He keeps pestering me. And he's pestering our jamaat. And Hazrat Jalal came. Wallahi, I tell you the truth. That Allah, Hazrat Sahib said, who's this? Then he looked at him in a certain way. And he was at a distance. And they said, it's him, it's him. He's uh, disturbing us. And he thought he was a peer. And Hazrat said, who is this who's pestering you? Making you tired. He said, I will not, who is this? And Hazrat looked. And just looked at him once, a glance. Oh, and I felt a jerk at that time. A jerk. A jeeb and like the earth shaken. And I left the company of Hazrat Sahib. And he was in a bubble with that. As soon as I went there, he took all of my feet. Allahu Akbar. He said, please forgive me, forgive me. Farooqi Sahib, forgive me for pestering. So brothers... I'm telling you, the effect of the true Sufi meaning from Allah is immersed in Allah Ta'ala. And where does the journey start from? This was the beginning, isn't it? Allahu Makfiri li. This is the dua we're asking, isn't it? Allahu Makfiri li. Allah give me true honest tawbah. True honest tawbah. Yes, the greed of the world, 4 plus 4 is 8, we lose, lose ourselves in the mass. We sell ourselves over societies and the attractions of the world, the love of the daughter, son, give them everything. And this overpowers us. We sell ourselves to the dunya. Within a second, we lose ourselves into the dunya. House, shop, they're big things. Within a second, for example, somebody's love will get lost in that. We'll get lost in our thoughts and our desires. Beware. Don't make cheap transactions, cheap bargains. Allah has given us our ruh, spirit, a soul, given us nisbat of his wali, a wali of Allah. Allah says, hey, this is the beginning of your journey to get to my rada, my pleasure. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Glory be to Allah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, am I, am I coming down? Uh, ease with ease with what I'm saying. Do you understand? I'm trying to speak on your level so that we will understand what's being discussed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. So this is what we'll understand today. That Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's istighfar, what was it? What was the objective? So when a person, and here's another point I'd like to mention to you in passing, is a very valuable point. Do you understand what is tawbah? How great a deed it is? Tawbah, repentance, don't waste it. After that comes what? Now see. The suffer starts, the journey starts with tawbah, and we are to go where? Where? Udkhuli jannati. So what's in between? What's in between? Subhanallah. Allah maghfirli, warhamni. At the time of tawbah, between tawbah and jannah, Allah has put in, warhamni, say subhanallah. Subhanallah. What's warhamni? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Astaghfar, after seeking forgiveness, rahmah. Mercy of Allah, rahmah. Rahmah. So before Jannah is Rahmah, so what we learn here, subhanAllah, is that it doesn't matter how much amal we do, deeds, deeds. Biggest deeds, the biggest amal, biggest acts of worship, greatest acts of worship. And you've done tawbah on a big scale, big scale, you've become a Sufi. Now see the value of the astaghfar. And you're doing kashf, you're seeing dreams and visions, you put your hands up, and the disease comes to life. There are walis like this, aren't there? I'm forgetting the name of that wali, I could tell you the event. The name uh, is awaiting my memory, inshallah it will come. But sometimes I forget the names we're discussing. So he was present, and he came to Baghdad. And I'm talking about the great Aqabirin, the first few generations. Great sheikh on a great level, on a great status. So when he came, and there was a wali of Allah, Zakira, Shakira, and she had a child, Muhammad. So when the noise came that the wali has come, people had respect. So the child, he started to look from above, from the balcony. Then let me see, who is this wali As soon as he started to look, then his, his foot slipped and he fell down. He fell down. And he passed away. 
So people start saying, well, oh, the child has passed away, child has passed away. And the, the child is dead, he's passed away. And the mother fell unconscious, started to scream and shriek. He's died and he came and said, what's happened? And they said that what happened is that you were coming and everyone was excited to see you, wanted to see you. And as I wanted to see you, this child slipped and fell. He said, where's he passed away? Where, where? He said, he's, he's died. He said, there's no one here. And, and then subhanAllah, when he took himself away from that place, then the child sat up. He sat up and everyone in the world is watching at that time that he's a great personality, Sheikh. So what did his mother do? She said that from, from my end, this child passed away, but you have made him come alive. Take him with you. I can't remember his name. Great, great Sheikh from the Sheikhs of India. And uh, from another name, he was uh, famous, subhanAllah. So with him, then the child uh, was assigned to him. And the mother gave him away for the sake of Allah that I have no children left. MashaAllah. So he became the wali of Allah of his time. What love between the sheikh and the student. So what was the reason for this? Tell me, what was the reason? Because that we see the Hazrat Isa alayhi salam, that didn't he make the birds come back to life, etc. Yes. So what a great status of these pious elders of us, and predecessors, so the ghulams of Mustafa, that they've been given the shan, they've been given the levels of marifat, their eyes and their hands and their ears, etc. They reach to Allah, that this person, subhanAllah, that he's reached to the heights, then for that person nothing is too difficult. And we don't practice good deeds that become famous or for others to praise us. No, it becomes a routine of life for people. And after reaching to this level, that for example, if you then have a connection with that teacher and you are there at the night time, the teacher is there, you'll read the events that after ibadah, subhanAllah is crying, he's shrieking, he's screaming, Allah forgive me, Allah forgive me, tell me, subhanAllah. Imagine, imagine. So what was that level? Subhanallah, that sins even despite a person going to a very high level, he is always dependent on what? Whatever happens will happen due to the rahmah, the mercy of Allah. Say Subhanallah, Subhanallah. So now, we, if we've understood this point, then the heart is happy. That even if then a person doesn't succeed, understand that Allah Ta'ala says, Bandagi, servanthood. And sincerity, don't think you're standing now, I've done all the good deeds and I'm on the high rank, high status, I know what is kashf, etc. Because they recognize that if we will succeed, we'll succeed through one action. Rahmatul, rahmati ilahi, Allah's rahmah, Allah's mercy, Allahu Akbar. Okay, so why does rahmah come before Jannah? Why does it come before Jannah? Uh, before paradise, it's come for people like us, empty boxes. Subhanallah. There's so many ibadat I can do, but I should not be in a false sense of uh, conclusion. That I'm this and I'm that X, Y, Z, I'm pious. After tawbah, the thing that attacks a person and, and finishes him off is the kabbar pride. When a person gets to darajat, ibadat, he has ilm, knowledge, ilm, ludmi. And when he starts to talk, then subhanallah, forget about ilm, people start debating, I'm alim, I'm alim. They start debating with each other. So ilm, ludmi, after it comes through ilm, ludmi, a person may have a high maqam, tafsir of Quran, he may know it everything, but it's stated that you cannot go into paradise. You cannot enter into paradise through these actions. Entrance isn't due to this. Why are you proud of your deeds and achievements? Finish off your takabur. After tawbah, the second level is what? That there should be no form of tahajjud, uh, takabur in your life, on your mal, on your wealth, on your status, because a big deception of shaitan, takabur, pride. Let me explain this to you. A very close is it to a person. Very close indeed is the action of pride. Very close. So close. When a person gets higher in his levels, a wali of Allah prescribes him something, he starts to progress, and then he becomes a show-off and does actions for nafs, then his uh, everything is different. Shaking his hands is different. His style is different. His clothes are different. His topi is different. Imamas change. So everything changes. Everything. No, 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 I can wear this, I can wear this. Oh, these people don't accept this. I've seen that even topis today, caps, different colors, forms, shapes. The topi of the alam of Islam. I don't know what topi is it out there. That because a lot of people wear that topi, the correct one, in Pakistan. Maybe you've seen it. This is the sign, remember, sign. Tell me. So if the sign is this, then subhanallah, this is the real sign. It's an imama, the true sign of a Muslim. There's no other sign. There's no other sign. There's no greater sign or bigger sign than this, subhanallah. So this is the reason the kabbur prevents us from practicing. So here the stamp of approval comes that beware, stop here, stop here. That nothing will take you to the heights in Jannah and Allah's rada. What will take us? Warhamni, Allah's rahmah, mercy will take you to Jannah paradise. So the person who's proud, all his pride can be eliminated and he can come with success to the hereafter. 
So this is rahma mercy, and it's in between the other two. So if we realize the seed in between, that where will success come from in the akhirah? From Allah's rahma, Allah's rahma, Subhanallah. So where will we get rahma from mercy in this world? Tell me. Where will we get this from? Inna rasulaka rahmatul lil alamin, Subhanallah. Subhanallah. All of the levels, my Mahboob Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, I've given to you, but let me make one announcement for the makhluk. What will benefit the makhluk, the creation? Inna arsalna, Allah says. Allah Akbar. The reality is this, my Mahboob, my beloved, that I have spread out everyone in the universe, in the world. And this deen is not just for the human beings. It's for all the makhluk. The, the, Allah Ta'ala has given this deen to Rahmatul Lil Alameen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent as Rahmatul Lil Every galaxy knows the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And every galaxy knows that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with Shifat, with the cure, the solution. And if we want to see this, we'll see on the day of Hashir, all the Prophets, they will be there, the Anbiya, the group of the Nabis, all the Ummatis will be stood there. Why? Why? Because Alameen, he was the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rahmatul Lil Alameen. And he has given us the guidance and if we follow him then we'll be successful brothers let's listen to the final point the Allah's rahmah that's in between in between tawbah if you want to make your tawbah successful and if you want to enter paradise tawbah paradise in between is rahmah and you can get rahmah through only one action ittabai rasul following of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam today if you please allah if we please allah today if we please allah's nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam today Subhanallah. If we please today, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then tomorrow Allah says, you will get my rada. Allah, Allah says, I promise you my rada. Say Subhanallah. What a cheap bargain. What a great system of the deen. That the time of dua, I'm just telling you a small point. What is dua? Yes. Otherwise, Allah Makhfiri, ten times, like a we say thousands of duas, we don't know, we should stop on the dua. All night long you'll spend doing the dua. All night long when we rush through. These are the duas of the fakirs who hear and they look and they ponder and analyze. Subhanallah. Allah Makhfiri, warhamni. Allahu Akbar. So asking this dua, it came into my heart. I'll tell you that whatever comes in my heart, I share with my friends in the evening. Subhanallah. And there's no other tafsir or intellect or technical points. If I made a mistake, please forgive me. Dawla Makram, the respectful scholars are here. I tried my best to be cautious. And if I continue to speak, then uh, you'll say taking too long. Please leave the masjid. So let's keep the words precious and concise. Subhanallah says that if you are obedient to the Prophet we are with you, I am with you. Allah says, Wa'akhru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.